Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to see how we can implement the OAuth 2.0 web server flow with the concept of PKCE, that is Proof Key of Code Exchange. So, firstly, we are going to understand what is PKCE concept. So, PKCE stands for Proof Key for Code Exchange, and it is a security feature that is used during the OAuth 2.0 authorization framework. PKCE ensures that client requesting the access token is the same one that initially requested the authorization code. It prevents certain types of attacks where a malicious application tries to exchange a, a authorization code for a access token. Now let's discuss what is the need of PKCE. So during the web server flow, we know that an app firstly requests for uh, requests an authorization code from Salesforce, and uh, after it receives the authorization code, it uh, it then makes a post request for the access token. The app which is requesting the access token adds one more parameter that is the consumer secret because the consumer secret is the information that only the app and Salesforce knows. It kinds of act acts like a password. And let's say if the attacker gets uh, access to the authorization code, uh, they won't be able to fetch the access token unless they have the consumer secret, right? But uh, pub the issue is, but public clients like mobile apps and single page apps can't keep the consumer secret as confidential. Unlike private client apps, which keeps them, uh, which has a, a client server architecture and keeps the consumer secret as confidential, and sends the consumer request, it risks the, uh, there is a risk that the consumer secret will leak. So that is not good, right? Consumer secret uh, is, the, is the secret key which shouldn't get leaked. So PKCE helps fill this consumer secret gap with a set of hashed parameters that only your app and Salesforce can understand. So now let's see how we can implement PKCE for our web server flow already created an in-depth web server or 2.0 web server flow tutorial previously on my channel so if you haven't watched it do watch it and then see this video so during the flow that implements pkce the app firstly creates a random string which is which we are calling it as a code verifier parameter it then hashes this value with the, the sha256 algorithm this hashed value is the code challenge parameter. So we have two parameters here. One is the code verifier and one is the code challenge. So uh, during the authorization request, uh, so in the web server flow, when we'll make the authorization request, we will pass the code challenge parameter and during the access token post request, we'll pass the code verifier parameter. So let me show you what is uh, how these code verifier and code challenge parameters are built. So a code verifier parameter is simply a random string that uses uh, uh, that uses uh, these characters that uses uh, these characters and it has a minimum length of 43 characters and maximum of 128 characters. A code uh, now this this was all about code verifier. Now what is code challenge? Code challenge specifies the SHA256 hash value of the code verifier string. Set, we, we can set this parameter to help prevent authorization code interception attacks that we have already discussed. So if we simply say that uh, a code challenge is equals to the SHA value of code verifier and then it is encoded in the base64 URL encode. So, so now one more important thing about this algorithm is like why uh, your question is why this works. Uh, so we now with this uh, we have an additional parameter we have to specify the code verifier and the code challenge so how does it work so a key concept here is that you can get the code challenge from the code verifier by running the SHA256 algorithm so the code challenge we are passing in the uh, so the code challenge parameter we are passing in our authorization request right so uh, we can get the code verifier from the code challenge. So the code verifier will pass in the post request. So once we'll pass the code verifier from the post request, Salesforce will run the SHA256 algorithm to see if this code challenge, which we have passed in the authorization request matches the code verifier string. If not, then the, uh, then the uh, authorization fails. 
so uh, and we can't run it backwards so we can't get the code verifier from the code challenge so now let's see a demo now now in my browser and uh, we all we know that the first step uh, in the or 2.0 web server flow is requesting a uh, an authorization code so uh, we have to pass in this parameters and uh, we have to pass an extra parameter here that is the code challenge so the code challenge which i have already told is the sh256 hash value of the code verifier and code verifier is a random string uh, before making the authorization request uh, let me go to the connected app so i've created this connected app and uh, for the testing purposes i've provided in all these scopes i have provided this callback url uh, it you can provide it anything now uh, an important thing here to note is i have checked this checkbox require proof key for code exchange extension for supported authorization flow uh, only when you check this checkbox then only salesforce you can use the pkce flow so and if i uh, check out the help icon so it shows me that uh it includes authorization code flow including uh, it includes web server flow the hybrid web server flow code flow etc so you have to check this checkbox apart from that uh, all the settings remains the same you'll have to uh, select the api uh, settings and then uh, provide the required oauth scopes so once you have done it uh, you have to click on manage consumer details. It will open this page where you will see the consumer key and the consumer secret. Uh, now, as the first step, uh, we have to do an authorization. So I've already created one URL for my org. So let me show you. So I'm using this uh, URL. So my first part is the my domain. So in the setup, you can type my domain and you can copy paste that. That is your first instance. Then the next URLs, URL is slash services slash or two slash authorize. You have to add it. Then uh, the first parameter is the client ID. You have to provide the client ID. Then the redirect URI. The redirect URI should match the connected apps callback URL. So if I go to the connected app and you can see this is the callback URL. This should match this. Then you have the response type. Uh, equals to code since uh, response type equal to code since this is a for the authorization code and then you have to provide the code challenge parameter now uh, the question comes is how we can give, fetch this code challenge parameter so there are two ways we can fetch this value using apex or if you want to generate a random uh, value so i have this website i'll add it to the description of my video so if you click on generate on this website it generates a code verifier and a code challenge for you without any efforts so this is generating the code verifier and the code challenge for you uh, you can either use it or uh, I have written a code to generate this, these values in apex so first this code generates the first code generates the code verifier as I said, code verifier is a random 43 digit string. So we are going to use a random string, which can, uh, which can be between 43 characters and 128 characters. So I'm using the 43 characters and I'm, uh, with this, we are generating the, uh, code verifier. Now the code challenge. So for the code challenge, what we are doing is we are, uh, we are signing it with the SHA-256 algorithm. Uh, we are using the crypto class in apex and signing it with the 256 sha256 algorithm and uh, in this and in this section we are uh, encoding it with the base 64 url encode and uh, let me and then we are doing a system.debug let me click on execute the first parameter is the code verifier second parameter is the code challenge now uh, we need the code challenge so i'll copy the second parameter so this is already uh, uh, this is already base 64 URL encoded and uh, signed using the SHA 256 algorithm. So I've made, so I've copy pasted it here and added it to the code challenge. Let me copy it and let me paste this in the URL. And boom, you can see the authorize authentication has been completed. And this is our, uh, authorization code that we added. Now the second step. 
the second step once we get the authorization code the second step in the web server flow is fetching the access token if i go down in this document you can see that the second step is to fetch the access token and to fetch the access token we we know what all parameters are required we will see it and uh, the extra parameter which we need to provide here is the code verifier so code verifier is only required if the uh, so code verifier is only required if the code challenge parameter was specified in the authorization request so since we are implementing pkce we provided this code challenge now this specifies the 128 bytes of random string so now let me uh, let me go to postman and uh, in the code verifier let me copy this one verifier and paste it here i have pasted the code verifier here uh, and our client id client secret redirect url would be the same i have to change the code here so let me go to my browser and let me go here so in the url in the url you will get the authorization code right so this is the authorization code and let me go to post let me go to postman and paste this so now in you can see the last two uh, two things that is percentage 3d instead uh, of percentage 3d just cut it and add to equal to because those are url encoded and uh, percentage 3d corresponds to equal to so now we are good let me send the request and if i open it boom i get the access token so now uh, in the future request you can add this access token and make calls uh, to get fetch data in your salesforce org so that was all for today's video so hope you learned something new and this is how you implement uh, the over 2.0 web server flow using pkce thanks everyone for watching